here we are in, wait for it, Lublin, which is the main city of Lubelska province in southeast Poland, southeast of Warsaw and southeast Poland. It's just above the region of uh, the Bieszczady, uh Lubelska province. At any rate, this is Lublin, it's the main city. And uh, we were brief briefly in Nawanchow, which is the uh, uh, main spa town of Lubelska. And here we are on, uh, in the marketplace. This area where I'm standing now is where they have the markets on the weekend. And uh, this is the old town up here. We're going to be exploring that in a couple of brief episodes. Uh, and wait for it. That's the town. But every town, every medieval town needs what? It needs a building like this in order to protect it. And so here behind me, you see the museum and the facade of the Lublin Castle. And there's a chapel with the most beautiful frescoes, uh, some of those precious frescoes, medieval frescoes uh, in all of Europe. And as you can see, still behind me, a better view of the Lublin Castle. And you'll see in just a second a glimpse of the main street up into the market here in Lublin. Where are we exactly? Well, we're about 100 miles, 160 kilometers, 170 kilometers south of uh, southeast of Warsaw. That's where we are. Um, it's, you know, Lublin grew uh, to be very important because of its place on the road between Krakow, when Krakow was the, was the main city of Poland, and, uh, and Vilnius or uh, Vilno, as the Poles call it, over in Lithuania. It was situated on the main trade route. And you know, it's still an important financial uh, center. It's a great place for investment. Lubelska really is welcoming uh, investment over the last uh, 10 to 15 years, particularly since Poland's been in the EU. And uh, uh, this is uh, famous as being one of the uh, poorest regions uh, per capita in all of Europe. That is Southeast Poland in general, and that includes Lubelska and the uh, other regions south, uh, all bordering on the Ukraine. So it's a great place uh, uh, to do business, and they're encouraging people to come here. So, you know, it's always been a, been a market town. It's, it's the ninth largest city uh, in Poland, which puts it, puts it pretty far down the league table. That's after Warsaw and Krakow and Wrocław and Poznan and uh, Gdansk, Gdynia, uh, let's see, Katowice, and I suppose uh, that would include Torun even, and uh, a couple of others that I can't think of right now. But uh, it, is, uh, it is the uh, ninth largest city in Poland. And here we can see the uh, this is the market, uh, uh, the road right up into the old town from the castle in the market square. This is one of my favorite slickets. I always stop and look at this street. I don't know why, but from, uh, from over there, the main street going through the old town here in Lublin, it's very, very attractive little slicket. And you can see they've put some paintings in here. So somebody else agrees with me. Or not paintings, but sculptures painted sort of representative of the kind of tenement buildings they have here uh, in the main part of the, of the city. Yeah, this Lublin. At any rate, uh, we're gonna go and look at the main square now and then I'm gonna tell you, uh, tell you a little story. Okay, right, so here we are in the middle of the old town. And isn't it a good view behind me? I like it. You get a combination of redone tenements and tenements under repair like this one here and a beautiful view of, of one of the uh, main churches of of Lublin you know Lublin is a is a place of uh, of great stories and a lot of this comes from uh, its, uh, its tradition as a place of learning do you know at the uh, turn of the 20th century late 1890s into the 20, 20th century into Edwardian times, as we call it, um, you had about 50% of the population was Jewish. And because of this, there was a heavy influence on uh, religious observance and education. 
uh, not to mention trade. But Lublin had always had uh, a great trading history. At any rate, there's been a history of education, curiosity about the world out of Poland, uh, particularly in the Middle, Middle Ages. You have Copernicus, of course. You have Madame Curie later on, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. I mean, there's a tradition of Poles making extraordinary discoveries. And uh, you also have the fellow who invented Esperanto, which would be a universal language combining uh, elements of, of many different languages. Poland has a lot of one-offs, but it also has a lot of one-offs in literature. Think of the artists uh, who've won the Nobel Prize. There was uh, Raymond, uh, there was Sienkiewicz, who wrote the great historical dramas. There was Joseph Conrad, who wrote in English, but he was Polish. I mean, there's a, in Warsaw, you can see a house that he lived on in um, a house that he lived in on Nowy Świat Street. Um, and you have, uh, of course, Szymborska, the poet, who recently won uh, the Nobel Prize. And you have a fellow called Singer, uh, Isaac Singer, who wrote a very famous book called The Magician of Lublin. It wasn't published until 1960. It was originally written in uh, Yiddish. Of course, Singer, in 1960, still had about 30 years to live. He died in early 1990s. And uh, so he was still mid-career. But he'd written this book in, in, uh, in Yiddish. Let's move on. I want to show you uh, one of the main streets and talk a little bit about uh, universities in Lublin, because it's known as a huge uh, university town. And here I am on the main street. We've come through the gate from the old town. And this is the new town, which transitions to the university area. There are tens of thousands of university students uh, in Lublin and uh, it wouldn't be far amiss to say that it has the most students of uh, any city uh, in, the, in the whole of the country. This is, uh, so here you are at the crossroads of the old route from Krakow to Vilnius. This is the place where the Lithuanians and the Poles stopped fighting each other and made a union in 1569, back during uh, Elizabethan times. 1569, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. It was uh, created right here because this was a meeting place between Krakow and uh, the heart of Poland and on the way to Vilnius to the Northeast through what is now uh, Belarus. At any rate, this is Lublin on a beautiful day in the summer, and you could do exactly what I'm doing. Come and go for a walk. We've showed you where to go, and you can't do worse than that. And there are plenty of good restaurants right here on the street or in the old town, depending on what kind of food you like. It's all available here in Lublin. A word about ice cream, because on a very hot day like today, where it's about 30 degrees centigrade plus, uh, which is 90-something Fahrenheit, I think, um, or right around it. Ice cream is very important. And here, you can see everybody lining up. These kids just came by and stopped. <laughs> Not uh, after I had already stopped. But anyway, you can see the different flavors here. We have the cream flavor, and, and then they have uh, some kind of uh, uh, thing with, uh, with uh, prunes. Schliefke is prunes. Flatsek is like, I don't know, like a, some kind of cake or something. It's like a flat uh, thing, can be with potatoes or whatever. Uh, Marscapone, everybody knows what that is. Um, here's blueberry, and then they have uh, cooked uh, and sugared uh, uh, almonds, and popcorn with caramel, and sorbet, they have uh, peach sorbet. So they have all the kind of things that kids just love to uh, have any time, not just on a hot day. <laughs>